Hello everyone. Some of you will have seen the unboxing video I shared on my channel last week. I received the most beautiful vintage box um, from Your Creative Studio. I'll leave the link to the video unboxing in the description box below. Um, but amongst lots of other wonderful things were these gorgeous um, pressed dried flowers. Now they arrived, um, all of these were on this piece of cardstock here and they arrived vac packed for safety during transit. So, you know, you can see that they're they're all beautifully preserved but I want to make some embellishments with these um, because I don't want these you know put aside um, and left in my stash because I'm too frightened to use them I mean this, these are just so gorgeous and too nice not to use now also um, in the um, vintage box with these pieces of mulberry paper here there were four pieces of mulberry paper these are a5 size so there were two of this one here with these gorgeous um, flowers in um, yep, it um, does go that way round. And they've got all these beautiful um, floral inclusions. They're just absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is the plainest one that was included. You can see all the gorgeous silk fibres um, in this as well. Um, and then there was this um, leaf design. And I just think these are going to be the perfect backdrop for some of these beautiful pressed flowers. Now I'm just going to pop some of these onto this piece of cardstock here um, just for safekeeping. Um, you know, these are so, so fragile. So I'm just going to go off now and just gently, whoops-a-daisy, um, just pop these um, to one side so that I can just work on one um, at a time. And I'm going to start off with the um, orange one here. So I'm going to put these somewhere safe. So let me just show you this orange flower. Now you can see that I've already lost one of the um, petals. That's okay because we can um, deal with that later. But that's why you need to use these because you can see how fragile um, they are. Now I just think that this orange mulberry paper is just absolutely um, the perfect backdrop um, for displaying this dried flower here. So that's what I'm going to um, use. And I'm working on a piece of parchment paper. Um, any kind of um, grease proof baking paper will work fine. I'm going to be adding glue in a second to glue it down and you just need something that your paper isn't going to stick to now I've got um, some glue in this jar here and this is um, Mod Podge which I've watered down three parts Mod Podge and one part water so I'm just keeping it um, in this jar here um, and let's get started now I've started off by just moving uh, my flower around the various parts of the mulberry paper just to see um, where I'd like to have it um, and I think that this blanker area here is the right place for it to go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a pencil um, just to mark where I want to cut because I don't want to use all of this. I don't want glue getting on the parts that um, I'm not ready to use yet. And so I've made myself a couple of pencil marks and I'm just going to um, trim that down so here we go you can see that um, I've cut the mulberry paper down to size now so that fits my dried flower really well now the other thing that I'm going to be using is um, a white um, catering napkin um, if you don't have any of these you could use um, any regular napkin um, of course they're all either two or three ply if you've got um, a three ply one all the better because all you need to do is just um, peel um, the back layer off um, because it's just that white translucent layer that you want for this next um, step so you know use whatever you have um, so what I've done here I've cut one of these napkins um, into four so I've just trimmed it down the middle um, and then trimmed um, the sections again so um, bear with me where's it gone so this is um, one of the quarters and then what I'm going to do is, is take the layers apart because, of course, these are three ply and I'll be able to use um, all of these. So I'm just going to very, very carefully um, just peel the layer off like, like this. So you can see I've now got three very, very sheer um, pieces of napkin. And if I just show you, let me just um, pop that into place, even without any glue or anything, um, you can see um, that flower through the napkin absolutely beautifully. So I'm just going to pop my delicate flower off to one side um, and I'm just going to use some of this glue to coat um, the whole of my piece of mulberry paper. Um, as I say, this is three parts Mod Podge and one part water. So I'm just going to coat the whole of this before I pop my flower um, back on. And this will hopefully hold my flower um, in place. 
So make sure that um, the whole of it is covered. There we go. And then I'm just going to very quickly um, grab my flower and just gently um, place that onto the mulberry paper. So you really need to sort of, you know, have a look at where you want um, that to, to go. So I want mine there like that. And then I'm just going to gently um, pop my flower, the one that's um, come, come off in place. I should probably have uh, grabbed myself um, a pair of tweezers. In fact, if I pop that down first and then I can um, place the flower on top, that's probably going to be easier. There we go, like like that. And then I'm just going to add my napkin um, on top. Now, part of this has got some embossing, so I'm just trying to um, avoid that um, that area. So we'll use the central central part. I'm just going to pop that down. There's the embossing. I can see it. It's right there. So I'm just going to pop that down just like that. And then I'm going to come back in with my paintbrush and I'm just going to very, very gently, this is a really, really soft paintbrush, um, and just add more glue over the top of this napkin. And I'm just going to gently go over this to tease it, um, tease it down. And I'm being careful not to tear um, the napkin here. So I'm having to be really, really gentle um, about this. So, you know, I will really have to take take my time and I can move it around so that it's in an area that suits me better. I'm going to use more glue rather than um, less just to make sure that um, it sticks. And if I get um, a few wrinkles, I'm happy with that because, of course, you know, the um, paper is textured anyway. So that's OK. We probably won't be able to, to notice. Gently teasing this down like this. Now, it's really important that you get rid of any air bubbles that are, are in there. So I'm just tapping on the flowers where the air bubbles are like like this. And I'm just going to go off camera now and just really concentrate on making sure that that's um, stuck down well um, and I've eliminated any any air bubbles. So that's what that looks like now that I've gently um, teased it down. And to make sure that I had no air bubbles along the spine, I was just making sure that I went along, um, right along the very edge with my paintbrush there, just to make sure that um, I eliminated any air bubbles just um, along the stem. And so now what I want to do is just pop that to one side um, for it to dry. And then, you know, if it's a little bit misshapen, um, once it's dry, we can weight it down underneath um, a heavy bottle book. Now I've just given the flower a really gentle um, dry with my heat tool and I've got it um, weighted down underneath a heavy book so we can have a look um, at that in a little while. So I'm just cutting um, another piece of the um, beautiful um, mulberry paper off. Which side do I want to um, use it on? Um, I like this side here I think and I've got um, this flower here this time so I think I'm going to have that um, on there like like that. Now let's Let's try a different method um, this time. Um, some of you will have seen me do this before. I've got um, a piece of deli paper here. Um, now this one here has got um, a crease, a wrinkle on the right hand side. So I'm just going to use it on the left. But what I want to do um, is just cut this down just so that I'm not wasting um, my deli paper. Um, I get my deli paper from um, Amazon. Um, I think when I purchased mine, it was about, I think, £10 for, for a box. Um, the brand I use here is, is Logan and this is 10 inches by, well, 10 by 10 inches, 10 by just over 10 inches. And as I say, £10 for 500 sheets. I bought this ages ago and I have still got loads left. What I do this time um, is just apply a small amount of glue just to the um, centre of the paper like this just to stick my flower down and make sure that that's not um, going anywhere. Let's put my paintbrush in the in the lid. 
we'll have this one in this orientation um, I think oh hang on a second no I think the um, petals are brighter on on this side so we'll have that there um, like that and then what I'm going to do is apply plenty of glue um, to the opposite side of this deli paper here like like this you've seen me do this with dried flowers before and it worked absolutely beautifully but i just wonder whether the tissue paper is more translucent so hopefully that's what we will find out so then what i want to do is just um, smooth this down with my finger again just making sure that um, i'm focusing on getting rid of any air bubbles so really focusing on pressing down um, just around the um, flowers here around the um, petals like like that um, and you can always use um, another piece of deli paper over the top as well just so that you can press down harder and um, you know it takes away the um, worry of, of tearing what you're using so I'm just going to make sure that I really burnish this down um, well so really getting um, in amongst the um, stems here and around the um, petals and then we can just gently um, peel this off. Just be really, really gentle. Now you can see that this isn't quite as translucent lucent as the tissue paper, um, but you don't get um, as many wrinkles either. It'll be interesting to see how the other one um, looks when it's um, when it's dried. Um, so again, I'm just going to keep pressing, pressing this down until I'm happy with it, and then set that um, aside as well um, to dry. So whilst I'm waiting for my flowers um, to flatten in a heavy book, I just want to try out these stamps here. So let's have a go with this one um, here. Um, this is um, my Memento ink in Espresso Truffle. Um, you can see that I invested um, in the larger pad. I think you've probably um, seen me use this before. So let's have a look and see how this stamps. This is going to be such um, a useful stamp. I just love that. And of course, you know, when um, a stamp is brand new, first of all, you know, the images don't come out quite so well usually um, the first couple of times, but that is not too bad. These are such good quality um, stamps. I really like that. And I'm not sure which way um, up this one goes. I think it's that way up. So let's try this one out as well. Let's hold that down there like like that isn't that just such a pretty um, stamp I want to try these on some um, cream paper as well how pretty those are gorgeous now an idea has sprung to mind and I want to um, make a few um, embellishments using this stamp. So I've stamped out a couple of times on a piece of craft cardstock using the Memento Ink and Espresso Truffle again. Um, and I've also dug out um, this stamp here. Now this is just one of the cheapies that um, I've picked up from um, Hobbycraft. They've usually got these in the clearance bin for about 50 pence. Um, and that's what that looks like. You can see that it's been well used. Um, and I've also dug out some of my um, Distress Oxide ink in frayed burlap. And so what I want to do is stamp this um, on one of the frames. So I'm just going to make sure that I apply plenty um, of ink. So that should that should do it. And I'm going to stand up to do this. Now, this stamp is slightly longer than my frame. And that's fine. I don't mind um, if it hangs slightly off the edge. So that's going to go there like that. Um, and I'm going to make sure that I press down for um, a few seconds just to make sure that the ink grabs. So there we go, that should um, do that. Um, now you could of course leave it um, like that, but um, I will just uh, take it one stage further and add some um, embossing powder. Um, and you can embossing use powder with Distress inks, it works really, really well. So I've got some clear embossing powder here. Any brand will work fine. I'm just giving it a good shake to break up the particles. And I'm just going to pour some of that over the top. You can see I've got a piece of paper here to catch um, any excess. Um, so that's pretty good there. So we'll tip the excess back into the jar. 
there we go and then i'm just going to um heat set this now with my heat tool now you can any color of distress ink with clear embossing powder and it's a really good way of um you know getting uh, plenty of colors of embossing powder so i'm just going to heat set this now and as soon as i've done that i'll be back And I just love the way that that looks. Um, I just think that's gorgeous. So I'm going to turn uh, my piece of paper around the other way. Um, and this time um, I want to do a white one. So I've got my clear um, embossing stamp pad here this time. So I'm just going to, um, again, apply plenty of the embossing ink. The Distress Oxide works in much the same way as any regular um, embossing um, ink, clear em embossing ink, but of course gives you a lot more colours with a clear powder. So again, I'm just going to stamp that there, like that. Hold it down for um, a few seconds just for the ink to grab again. There we go, that should do it. And then this time, um, where's my piece of paper gone? This time I'm going to add um, white embossing powder. Um, again, any brand, it really doesn't matter. Mine is um, Cosmic Shimmer. So we'll apply some of that over the top. I always give it a shake just to um, break up any particles, any clumps. So there we go. And again, I'm just going to heat set that with my heat tool. Let me just pop the excess back in. Now, of course, you've got a choice. You can either um, cut these out um, with a pair of scissors or you can tear them. I'm going to tear these and um, see what these look like. So I'm just going to go um, as close to the edge as I, as I can. So I'm using my thumb here just to um, guide it. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got um, a croaky voice. And I'm just going to go all the way around like this just to give it the distress look and I'll do uh, the distress look and I'll do exactly the same with the, with the other one as well so that's what that looks like I just love that I just think those look so cool just look at that um, and I've done another one as well where I've just cut it um, with scissors um, I prefer the raggedy edge so I'm just going to add some memento ink um, now around the outside just uh, just to distress it um, even more and to frame it so let's see what this looks like and this will catch on the torn edge and should give it um, a really nice look so let's see what this looks like just absolutely love that so that's what these look like now that they've been inked around the edges i just think those are gorgeous now i've also um stamped out a bumblebee um again using frayed bell up here and a butterfly using white embossing powder but i want to try something now i have seen the lovely andrea kidman um, do this this is just bleach which i've put into um, a ramekin dish um this is thick bleach you probably um could use um thin bleach um, as well and I'm just going to apply some um, to the craft cardstock here um, in the gaps and just see whether it bleaches the paper I've seen Andrea do this technique to great um, effects before now and so um, it's something that I have been itching to try so let's see if anything happens so I'm just going to apply the bleach. I've only put um, a small amount um, in here. So let's add it to the body um, of the butterfly and see if anything happens. And I'm using a tutty old paintbrush as well. You don't want to use your, your best paintbrushes for this. And it should bleach out the um, cardstock. I think we're just going to have to wait and um, see if anything happens. So the bleach has now had time to take effect and I just think these look so cool. Um, just look how gorgeous that looks. It's just added a really nice element of, um, of detail. I really like those. Um, of course, I couldn't stop there. I've done some birds as well. Um, love, love, love these. Um, this was another cheapy stamp from um, Hobbycraft. So that was that one there. Um, I've also done some dragonflies as well. I tried it in black. I don't like the black um, so much. I think the 
the white um, and the frayed burlap is um, a much nicer effect. I did add um, a touch of bleach to this one here. So that's those. Um, what else did I do? I also um, did some using some of these stickers from the set as well. So, of course, this was the pack of stickers that were included in the box. And so I've added um, some of these to the centre of two of these. And I think those look really cool. That one is done on cream cardstock. This one is white and I've just um, distressed it um, around the edges. And I also did some um, using um, a leaf stamp set as well. So that's what those look like. These are all done on white cardstock. And these two have been distressed, whereas I've left um, these ones plain. And I've just used two colours of um, Stays On ink to do these. So let me just let you have a quick peek um, at these before I pop these to one side um, and dig my dried flowers out of the book that they're being weighted down in. So here they both are now that they've been trimmed around the edges and I honestly think that I prefer the one that I did with um, tissue paper. It's more translucent for one. Um, you can see the fibres in the mulberry paper better and also the um, inclusions of the petals as well and I just really like that um, effect. Um, the deli paper is slightly more milky and I think that deli paper lends itself better um, to using it on white cardstock. The, these are some flowers that I did a couple of years ago um, using the same method but on white cardstock and it just gives it a much much smoother finish than it does on the mulberry paper but you know you can use either method it's entirely up to you um, but this definitely stabilizes those gorgeous flowers and makes them much more practical in my opinion to use. Now I will of course be having a think about how I want to use these but just look how translucent they are. I mean if you wanted to layer this on top of any type of book paper, this is Japanese um, book paper, then you can do and it just shows up absolutely wonderfully. Now I've had all of these embellishments um, sat on my desk for a couple of days because I got completely carried away with eco-dyeing, taking advantage of the weather whilst it was still good. Um, so I want to um, make a simple collage um, and I think I'm going to use um, one of these pages here as my background. I just love this pad here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, tear down the side of it just to make it you know more um, irregular I don't want to tear too much of the the flower here so just tapering this just to give it more of um, an interesting shape I think um, then what do I want to do let me just choose some other bits and of course things were going so well until Louis arrived and decided that um, he wanted a big big fuss so I'm just going to give him a giant cuddle first and then we'll carry on. Say hello to everyone because they always love to see you. In fact, you've had several requests for a visit recently. So here he is. <laughs> Look at him as well. He's all dirty. He's been rolling in the dust outside, I think. Yes, you're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So back to business. I hope you enjoyed that little visit from um, Louis. I've pulled out a few bits and pieces here that I thought I might be able to use to um, create this collage. Um, and I've decided I want this piece here as my focal image. And so I'm just going to try and layer um, a few bits and pieces and see um, what I can come up with. Um, so I'm thinking of doing something like um, like this using all the natural tones because I just think this is so absolutely gorgeous um, as it is. Um, I'm thinking I could use this piece here as well. This is just one of the um, little blocks from this pad here. I just think these are just lovely for using um, in collage and I just like how that looks um, tucked down there um, in the bottom. Um, I was also thinking I can maybe add something like this, maybe some um, washi tape um, as well. I like that there, like that. I've just got this um, little leftover piece off uh, one of the sides of um, some of this burlap um, as well, hessian burlap, whatever you want to call it. Let's have a go with some um, washi tape and see what we can um, do with this. Maybe we can um, tear it as well, just to you know give it a bit more interest too. Um, we could maybe have something like like this. Let's have a look maybe put 
that over the top, upside, upside down. I'm just playing, just, you know, trying to add a bit of um, interest. I'm really liking actually how, how that looks. Tuck that, which way round do I like that? I like that that way round. Tuck that under there and then maybe have this here somewhere. That looks really, really interesting um, to me. Um, I need something for here. Let me just go and see what else I can find. Right, I've got myself one of the little um, Tim Holtz transparent butterflies. Um, that looks really cute on there. And again, it's still sticking um, with that natural um, theme. And I've also found this as well, which is just, you know, when you cut um, an envelope, this is just the snippet that's taken off the top so that I could get um, into it. And I quite like the idea of having that um, somewhere like that. Um, what I want to do, though, is ink um, around the edges. I quite like um, that sort of uh, comp composition. I've got some frayed burlap here. So I'm just going to ink around the edges. I do want to add this as well um, to my junk journal. So um, this is where I'm going to display it. So I'm going to ink around the edges of all these pieces um, and then, you know, play around with the uh, composition. And as soon as I'm happy with it, um, I'll be back. But you can see how, you know, I'm going about it here. So you can see how I've inked around the edges of all of my elements now and I'm just going to start gluing things down with a tiny bit of Fabri-Tac. In fact, this is three in one I got told off the other day for calling it Fabri-Tac. Um, although to me, um, they're both exactly the same and I really can't tell um, a difference. I'm going to have that there like that and it can hang off the edge. I quite like um, how that um, how that looks. Um, what else do I want to do? And I'm just going to keep popping my pieces back on just so that I can, you know, see how I want to um, align things. I want this one here, um, I think with the pointy bit going up to tuck under there. So I'm going to glue those down again, just using some um, Fabri-Tac. And I don't know whether you can see, I'm just using a really small amount of, um, of Fabri-Tac, um, the three-in-one there. Let's have a let's have a look, maybe a bit higher higher up. I do want it to cover um, that perforation line there, like that. And then we can have this one, as I say, just um, sticking out the top. So you don't need much glue, just enough to hold it um, in place. Like, like that, I think, maybe a bit further, further over. Yep, I like, I like that. And I do like the idea of having this piece of um, fabric here. So I'm just going to run a small amount of glue just along here like this, which will hopefully be enough to hold it in place. There we go. I don't mind having, you know, a few strandy bits hanging over the um, edge. Tap that down. So we can stick this one um, down here as well. There we go. I think I'll have that there. And then I'll run a bead of glue just down the centre of the, just a blob in the centre of the butterfly like that, which should be enough to hold um, that in place. And of course this will dry clear anyway, about there, like that. And I think I'm just going to let that dry for a minute or two before I decide what um, I want to do next and um, where I want to place this and whether I want to add this or not. And then I've been fiddling around with this one for ages and I want it slightly above um, the little collage that I've put um, there. So I'm going to glue that down um, there just like, um, like that. It's all about balance and um, to me that balances really nicely so that's where it's going to go. So we'll pop that just there, like, 
like that. Um, now, I'm still not sure um, about this piece here. I have inked this with some of the Memento Ink and Espresso Truffle just because the frayed burlap was too um, light and I'm still toying with the idea of having that um, on there, something like that. But I want to pop it in my journal first just to see if the journal will handle the extra bulk. So this is the page that I've decided to um, place my little um, collage on and I'm still playing um, around with this and I don't know but every time I take it um, away it just looks as if it's um, missing something. This is going to be bulky but I'm going to go for it and so I'm going to glue this down. Now to glue this on I'm just squeezing some glue um, just into the fold here like that um, so it's going to go on there about there I think and I'm just going to have to leave that be and just hope that um, that that sticks and that does the trick I just I just love that piece I just love that collage so much and I'm so glad that I added um, this piece here I mean the, the journal's getting uh, you know to be a big fatty um, anyway but I just love that so right okay let me pop this to one side and let's see what we can do um, with one of these flowers now, these are the two dried flowers that um, I did on handmade paper. I'm going to save this one um, and just work on, on this one today. I've got some Japanese paper and I've just got the urge just to pop this um, on there as a background because this um, particular flower here has got um, a very oriental feel. I've got some glue stick, not quite enough just to hold it in place because what I'm going to do is sew um, around the um, edges or at least I'm going to get Alex to do it because he's already got his um, sewing machine um, set up upstairs because he's busy quilt making so I'm just going to get him to whiz um, around the outside of, of that for me I just love that just look how cool um, that is and we've even got the um, strings as well which I asked him to leave now I wish that um, I'd inked around the edges and I completely forgot in my excitement um, and haste so I'm just going to peel the papers back here and just really carefully just ink around the edges um, just to frame it um, slightly so I'm just going to go off and um, and do that you see that looks much better I just love that so much on that Japanese paper it just looks gorgeous so I'm just going to really really carefully now um, tear around the um, edges like this just um, holding with my thumb just to make sure that I don't um, screw it screw it up I also want to um, slightly trim um, these threads as well so let's trim that there um, we can maybe leave a bit dangling um, on the back as well so let's have a look what have we got um, what have we got here so we'll leave that um, and I'm just going to go and continue going right around the edge like like this so this is what I've got so far and I've been playing around with some papers that I can um, possibly mount it on I've got a piece of coffee stained paper here that um, I think my friend Betsy Doodle um, sent me and I've also got um, another sheet of the paper out of the um, paper pack and I think I'm going to use this because um, I'm adding this to my journal many of you know that I just really like to add repeat um, elements um, I'll show you what the coffee stained paper looks like in a second and I just like having the continuity um, and repetition of having those two pages together I've inked around the edges again and I'm thinking that I'm going to um, have it on this page here I just think you know it just works really nicely it picks out the orange that's um, in this boho page um, here um, so I think I'm going to pop that there I've also got another one of the um, Tim Holtz flowers as well which again adds that repeat element and I just think it's a really nice um, addition let me just show you what it looks like on the coffee stained paper and you can see if you think I'm making um, the right decision no definitely the um, other the other page I think because I've got the cream at the top there it just adds a really um, nice touch of simplicity I, I love that so I'm going to decision made and I'm going to glue that down with some three in one so I do hope that's given you some ideas as to how you can use these gorgeous your creative studio boxes um, a couple of you commented um, when I did the unboxing that you'd bought these in the past but weren't quite too sure as to how you could use the um, elements 
elements. Um, so I hope this has given you ideas as to how you can use them to create um, journal pages, as well as making, you know, wonderful um, ephemera and bits and pieces. I mean, you know, these would be perfect for um, adding as card toppers. Um, these are small enough for you to be able to make those lovely um, hidden paper clips. Um, you could put it on the side of a journal like that. I can think of so many different ways to use these. Um, I'm going to save this flower here because I've got um, an idea um, as to what I can do with this. So you'll see that um, in a future video. I've also decided to save all of the other dried flowers because I'm in the process of making a um, nature journal and thought they'd be perfect for that. Um, but you'll find all the details for your creative studio as well as the unboxing. Um, I'll also leave the playlist to um, this um, journal here. This is my Usual Scraps 2020 um, journal. So you'll be able to see how I made the journal as well as all the pages um, that I have created to date. But if you enjoyed today's video, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below and take care, everyone. Stay safe and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.